Hello friends, foes and familiars, welcome to Dragons Are Cats. I am Dragons Are Cats and this is Dragons Brew D&D. I will be your host and your DM for tonight and with us tonight are our wonderful players so let's go do a round and give us one little piece of information from the previous session that we picked up on. Starting with Probod, who are you playing? Hey, I'm playing Ikram, the Asamir Druid and last week we snuck into um can't remember the name of the town uh the place lork lork um that's going to be my bit of information just so <laughs> someone else has something else to say now's probably you don't not. remember any more than that do you <laughs> <laughs> now's it's probably not day drinking <laughs> now's probably not a good time to grab that beer maybe we'll try afterwards anyway, <laughs> next up we have uh viridian knight play who you're playing hi i'm viridian knight i am playing uh macaf the draconic sorcerer i always i want to say draconic soul but it's not that no. that's a different thing a little bit. isn't it what? draconic bloodline it's like yeah. draconic bloodline and what's the thing it's the monk class i think i get confused with uh sun soul something like sun that. Soul. Maybe. that something has a soul not me. Um, uh, last session, yes, we uh, broke in. We brought down a barrier which was being powered by uh, tieflings through cultists, but also being powered by uh, the Arrow of Fate, which uh, is the arrow that split the dragon god Io into Bahamut and Tiamat. So we have that now. That's my bit. That's a good bit. Following that up is uh, Boneweaver. Oh, hello there. I'm Luke playing Casimir, the Tiefling Illusion Wizard. Uh, so after we found the Arrow of Fate, we, uh, we got ready to skedaddle because uh, that brought down the barrier around the town. So the the Alliance army could uh, come in and attack. And then everything went to shit. What went to shit there, BM Curfew? <laughs> um, hi, Brad playing Amalia, the Eldritch Knight. And when we were climbing the tower, barrier disappeared we got hit by a meteor oh yeah there was a couple of meteors there was mm -hmm. a total of that's why i don't remember because of denial yes and <laughs> ikram almost died <laughs> ikram, ikram got knocked knocked down um From what full so, hp he was just off full hp but he would have died anyway so, i think either yeah. way yeah. um amalia got hit really bad Got stuck under some rubble while the tieflings got we just hit. kind of brushed it off. Hardish, but still, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. not too bad. We fine. The, the, the squishier members. The, the smarter the, the, members. The fire resistant members. Um, That's true. Fire <laughs> resistant members. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it's and, a lot of damage. And then we just we <clears throat> got out of there, got healed up by some clerics and uh ready to dive back into it oh and we found out that cleric was like a dragon oh yeah uh emma ella 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 as you find out uh as we are all on the battlefield at the moment uh just out from us uh east gate of lork we dive straight back into our scene as the party has been dropped off by the g-force and have been brought front and center to, uh, in front and center between all of the Who is the G-Force, by the way? The G-Force is the squad commissioned by Lord Sandstorm Bright Candle of Riverguard, the King of Mesro, and our abandoned player who is not with us tonight, because uh, Joy He's Gaze never here. <laughs> He's never here anymore because he also now has. Final Fantasy 7, so we won't be hearing anything from Joygasm for a while. <laughs> As 
The party was the Red dr- Griffins. That's why they're the G Force. Yeah, they Red Griffins. They Red Griffins because that's why they call themselves the G Force because naming conventions are fun in D and D. Anyway, but I also think it was named after his original g- Griffin, Gobbles. Very much so. Rest <laughs> in <the> gobble. <laughs> he got roasted. The actual, the official name is the Gobble Force, probably. He got burnt, <laughs> probably. To be honest. He got destroyed. Yeah. So the party stands in the battlefield um, as these alliance forces, a mixture of elves, dwarves, the humans, half elves, halflings, um, tieflings, half orcs, orcs. All the half things. All the half things. Basically, um, all the cities along the Sword Coast have gathered together at the moment in a pseudo truce as they come together to battle the force of the Iron Circle that is under the command of Sharax the Seer, an ancient green dragon aligned with the cult of the dragon who are attempting to summon Tiamat back to this world. As our party find themselves in the open of the fields, the trebuchets and ballistas, arcane cannons begin to fire back and forth between Lork uh, and in the open fields where the monstrous creatures from the high forest have been gathered a lot of them have essentially been eradicated by the two massive craters uh 80 feet in diameter completely that stand in front of the actual uh now destroyed eastern gate as well which is a huge crater now with one steep incline um the party have been healed by the cleric of bahamut ella Ella gave a little bit of a hint to his who she is and what and how she feels about the situation, revealing around her eyes are silver scales with silver and gold well, uh, with silver and yellow eyes. As her eyes went from that hazel brown uh, hazel brown of her elven form to reveal this uh, pure silver. So we got healed. You got healed. Are we just at full? So, um, uh, Brad got healed up, and you got healed up to the amount that you are on now. I need to mute my phone because, my god. Wait, alright. I don't remember how much I got healed by, to be honest. I uh, got healed for 80. Yeah. Oh, okay. That I would think... put me at full then. I... Yeah, I think I got full. Yeah. As. So and we you, still have yeah. the hero's feast on. You still have the hero's feast on. So. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I believe that. you all put, your, uh, put yourselves back up to where you would have been last week after you receiving the 80 hit points. So, for the moment, the party finds themselves out in the fields. It is a hellscape of a battle happening at the moment. As confusion be- uh, begins to set in, the shell shock uh, dissipates and forces begin to try to coordinate themselves again. There is just a smoldering crater from the east gate. Ella looks to you all and says, we need to get through the city and get into the castle. We're going to lead as much as the forces up in a three-prong attack to get to the main gates. We still have the whole city to get through. Battalions, everything. You see that up above, uh, Wyverns flying out from Lork, with riders on their back, intervene with the G-Force along with other um, Arca- Arcane Brotherhood uh, mages who are in the sky battling under the fly spells and casting fireballs. The explosions of these uh, sulfur balls going off, creating little lights in the sky. Trebuchets and ballistas firing back and forth, screams of people raging on into battle. So, party, I leave it up to you. We still, we still know of that passageway that gets to the, yeah, the main keep. We just need to make our way there. Mm-hmm. The rest of the forces are occupied. Yeah, we should be able to sneak through undetected. The only problem is we're we're at the east side. We we need to go all the way back to the north side. I can handle that, I think. 
And I am going to pull out a scroll of Arcane Gate. Mm. <clears throat> All right. So I can teleport us, I believe, over to the north side, which is where we need to be. Yep, so you're currently at out on the lower fields of the eastern gate. Dancing lights, that's not it. What's it called? What did you use? This end gate. No, no, it was the thing you called? A scroll of... Arcane gate. Arcane gate, okay. Sounds cool. Last time, arcane gate. <laughs> so yeah, basically it like... It opens a portal in two spots that are linked for up to 10 minutes. So it's just like... Can you cancel it like at any time? Home. Like once we go yeah. through it, can you cancel it or...? Yes, yep, it's concentration. Right. How big? It is a 10 foot diameter circle, circular portal. I'm just wondering if people will be able to spot that quite easily. Uh, well, <coughs> the cool thing is... The other side doesn't get shown. Yes. If you choose Only so. one side is shown. Yeah. So if you put the back to like them, it just looks like <coughs> the landscape. That looks sounds so overpowered. It's a high level spell. <laughs> it's a sixth level. Yeah, sixth level spell. Wait, was it a scroll or was it a spell? It's, it's a scroll. scroll. Okay. A spell, spell scroll. Where did you get that from? Uh, I don't know, but we got it ages ago, apparently. It was in my, my list of uh, spell scrolls. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's a good time to remember you got it. Yeah, yeah that's sick. <laughs> so, as Casimir casts this spell, give me a rundown on, rundown on how you cast this. Prove it. Prove to me uh, how you cast it. Prove it. Prove it. I read hmm, the scroll. Well, mathematically. <laughs> uh, I recite the formula for a circle. X squared plus Y squared <laughs> equals one. And... Uh, that I guess. <laughs> no, don't. put the scroll down on, on the on the ground. Uh, let's see, what's it need? Verbal and somatic. See, I just sort of like shape my hands into a circle and just look. Um, so I have to like be on flat ground, right? Or I need to see my destination. Yes. Um, so I'd, I'd have to put it sort of outside where. I can see past the curve of the wall. Yeah, if we if we were back like this, yeah, this corner, you are out yeah, far so. enough. You can see you, it is okay. raining. Um, yeah, it's it's a medium it's a medium uh, rainfall at the moment, but you can still see under that range. And also, you've studied okay. the terrain as well. Okay. Oh, so you got to actually have line so, of sight. Yeah, you have to. It's, which, yeah, five hundred point. You can see. To a point, you can see. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I just like look into the distance from my hands and slowly cross them over, smaller and smaller, to a point. And then... Whoo, portal pops up, linked to the spot I could see. Alright. The portal links. Spell scroll burns up as the magic flares out to create the spell. Arcane gate opens up. Coming out over across the field. Um hand going onto Macath's shoulder. Ota. I'm glad I stayed back for that first part. Are you okay? Yes, yes, I'm fine. I'm coming with you. She'll just look to the, the rest of the party and go, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Ella looks over the rest of the party as well. Call on everyone you need to. Any, anyone. Could be of mm. help through this. Can I look around? Mm -hmm. Anyone we can think of? You can pull Ota, you can pull, you can basically pull any resources off um, anything else basically so you will still have your assets as well which you still have uh, you no longer have your Eldritch Knights you can call for your Toby Kadachis on the northern side Ikram you know you can when you get over there you still have um, 
Your druids are spent. Yeah, I was I gonna say, I'm pretty sure they got spent. Yeah, yeah. They were, were they healing? Is that what it was? They were in the forest. They were in the forest. They no, no. What did they? What did they use? I think they healed us, didn't they? That was uh, this. No, they did, and we hadn't end up using them. We didn't get a chance to. Oh, I thought we did. They stayed in the forest. Yeah. Oh. They basically drew away the. Actually, no, that was Ikram. Don't worry. So yeah, you still have the druids. You don't have the spies. No. Uh, the spies got decimated, of course. Uh, the Eldritch Knights, you only have two of now. Two could still be handy. Okay, you take two with you. Alright, so who wants to roll me a d100 plus 10? I haven't done one yet. I think I'll, I'll do it. Right. <laughs> I just wonder if the druids would come in handy Ooh. for causing a distraction if we needed it. Yeah, take them with you if you want. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. How many is there? Three? Uh, it's an ambiguous <laughs> number. So oh, it's like a squad of, squad of five. Alright, so. You will have five druids go with you, and they'll, they'll be your basically be your stealth and survival assets going into this next section to help you get through in any way, shape, or form. Do we know exactly where the, the entrance was? You know exactly where the entrance is. I'm just going to okay. change the music real quick. Can we see through the gate before we go through it? Like, if there are people? Yeah, or are we just we, going uh, through blind? Uh, actually, no, I don't think you can see through it. So we're just kind of going through blind if there is anyone there. It's outside the city, though, so... Uh, and, and we can see where we're going from where we are. So, you know, getting inside, um, to get inside the building, you need to be on the north side of the incline of the hill of the keep. As the keep rests atop a crest, on the northern side, there is a, uh, uh, apparently a hilarious joke being told by my roommates, uh, <laughs> that there is a... Uh, old, uh, old hidden door into the storeroom. So, um, just get that music back on going again. Why didn't why that stop going? I have no idea. So, you travel on through the, you travel on through the gate and get onto the northern side. Teleporting through over here, there's an eerie quiet as you can hear the battle raging on the um, on the eastern side. Here at the northern side, you can see that a lot of the northern gate is completely distracted, even heading down the battlements around the ring of the walls, heading towards the east gate in just utter confusion and not knowing what the heck is going on over there. You can see that the ballistas are still pointed uh, have begun to point over towards the eastern gate as well from here and whatever trebuchets line the walls as well are also beginning to fling over there they've taken all uh, idea of defense away from this section uh, are working to support their lower wall which is causing a bit of a which is causing a bit of dilemma for your forces on the ground and as they struggle to push through the east gate up the steep cliff that now is the uh, crater in the ground. But you have a fairly unattended uh, nor and distracted northern gate. How big is our party right now? So there's us, there's the oh, druids, nice. there's the knights. Nope, nope, only druids. Knights and that were in the tower with us, they would have gone. I thought you it. said there was two no, of them. I came with there was two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they died. Sorry. They were oh. all dead. Why do you lie to us, Carl? I think <laughs> because Why you lied you to us, you shouldn't give us two. Of us I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> every single thing that came, every single person that came with us to that tower is dead because they got hit by the meteor as well. Yep. They, well, and, they barbecued. Instant. The only, <laughs> the only ones that might have made it is the, the rogues. Because they were out on the walls. Because they they got rid of the guards and then they went around the walls. So, 
They're probably just still killing people on the walls. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah. Nope, dead. Oh. Bro. Bro, this is grim. Anyway. Well, yeah, that's what's happening at the moment. Anyway. As you reach... All is fair in war and war. Exactly. There's no love here, just war. Just as, war. As you reach this section, uh, you can see the... Uh, this northern gate, there are three sets of port of incredibly huge portcullises. All of them are shut closed. These three iron gates lead into a small little road that then continues down um, with some spread out built, uh, spread out cottages that then goes into the main city. There are three sections of field out in the city that can lead uh, up and to the castle if you want to go by the fields if you want to go by just the city uh go through the maze that is the city itself you're more than welcome to you are open to approach but you are all on the northern side now what would you like we, to do and we're through the walls into the inside yeah Good. yes right whereabouts did we come up exactly where at oh oh i thought this, the I secret thought tunnel was, like was a... supposed to go into the keep yeah, I thought there was a keep tunnel. Them. I thought yeah. there was a. The I thought there was a tunnel. Was there. supposed to go to the keep. I thought. Yeah, I thought there was one around here. Oh yes, yeah. So it is up there. My mistake. Right, right, right. I just changed it on the other side. So yeah, that is um, freehand. On the northern side, you can you make yourself around from the northern gate. I'd like someone to make me an investigation check at advantage. I do. That's my thing. That's my thing. Right. On a 20. natural twenty, you've uh, you've scribed this section. Of course. You've sent um, agents down into this section to check it out, scope it out. It is an abandoned old, um, not not sewer. It's uh, just old water piping. It's probably only about. Um, it is large enough for you to s to crouch in and crawl and crawl through. As you get towards um, a main junction, which allows you to get out just on uh, just on the inside of the castle's outer wall that leads uphill, and there is um, another junction that takes you all the way up. So basically, up into the castle through there. Okay. Um, should I use Pass Without Trace? Yes. All right. You can use the Druids to do Pass Without Trace, so you don't fail, send a spell. True. Yeah. yeah, I might just get one of them to use Pass Without Trace. Okay. That would consider them <laughs> using the, uh, using them as your ability. Oh, uh, I can't not, just use one. It will not work on concentration. It won't work on concentration for you at all. So you'll always have that plus ten for the duration of the next hour. That's the asset bonus. Yeah, that's probably right. Sir. Yeah, it feels cool with that. Yes. Yeah, because I mean, I reckon. Yeah, cool. I'm I'm easy. Right. That gets you all into the keep itself. Now I'm just going to move you on over to it. I'm guessing we're on like the ground level. You're on the ground level. Like out, outside the actual main keep, just like inside the like the walls of the keep. Or something along those lines. Oh, there's a big old map. Yep, and you are all uh, down the bottom. Down here. On the first on the ground floor. This is a big old map, so please do bear with me and use the numbers as a reference. Mm, what okay. do you mean by the numbers? There's numbers on the map, like K7, K6, to mark out sort of areas. Oh, uh, my internet sucks, so I'm still loading. Uh, there's just like um, key points, I'm guessing, that have like numbers marked for them. Where are we? Down the right, down the bottom right, of the page. Yeah. Right in the middle, actually. Because oh. there's, there's two. Yeah, true, true. Because we're, um, we're on. The... Oh, okay. Yep. I zoomed out so much that I was like, I can't see anything. It's a big old map. It's a big old map. So we'll make it uh, a bit old bigger. Are these Please. five foot squares still? Yes. Yeah, okay. they are. Cool. Yeah, cool. 
So from where we are, we can move. Oh. That much. The window! <laughs> so, just let me set this up for you. Real good luck. Real good luck. I'm going to explain to you in a second. So, standing atop a short, steep sided uh, hillock overlooking Lork, the city trees and ground cover on the hillside are cut back at least 100 feet from the walls of the keep, leaving a bare, grassy slope. As you come out, you see that this hill rises precariously in on the eastern side. The other approaches are more gradual. Uh, more gradual, I mean, but none flatten out until about a hundred feet above the village. The causeway you've come from, from um, uh, a main causeway of hard packed dirt climbs around the hilltop. You can see it loops up and around, going towards uh, the main, the castle's front gate on the other side of the keep. And you can see that from where you are, if it wasn't for your past without a trace, you would be incredibly exposed to archery fire from the towers, the walls, and from the, uh, from most of its length along the keep as well. Even coming up, you can see that arches and ballistas also line every section of the wall through the keep. You see that there are also wyverns and their riders atop the central building. To the east side, there is, uh, I mean, yeah. To the, to the east side? Yeah, to the east side of the map, there is the main tower that rises up three stories high. Uh, atop of it, the, you can see that there are spellcasters uh, attached to harnesses and also ballistas at each corner of the tower. Currently, the Iron Circle forces are holding the high ground against the Alliance force as the Calvary and Dwarves try to break their lines on the eastern side. Drakes, Cultists, and Wyverns have now joined their ranks on uh, to reinforce their lines. As you, can, as you can see from this distance, the Cult is joining in with the Iron Circle as since it took you a bit of time to get through the uh sewers itself to get to this point uh the first sections of the alliance battle of uh, the alliance forces have made it to uh through the city you see the city does burn in sections as well in front of you you see the stable tower that um hides the entrance to the store room. i need someone to make me an investigation perception check an investigation or perception check at advantage I'm good with yeah. perception. I'm not very good with either. You said no advantage roll. or straight roll? Advantage. Uh, I'm gonna go perception. Oh, hey, hey, beat your mate. Nice mate. It's hey. team effort, alright? Nice. Get wrecked. Wait, what do you mean you beat me? <laughs> no, no, Rob beat. Rob, you beat oh. Luke. Oh. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, 24 is out of 23. <laughs> <laughs> and you both rolled 15 for your other one, though. That's... Uh, nice team. And you had plus 12. Yeah. Weak. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let the old man win sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, through uh, Casmi's first off investigation, and then Ikrin's uh, through Ikrin's senses and hearing the mechanism, uh, discover that it is. It is a slight uh, sliding mechani mechanism that allows the door to shift just a little bit to allow each one of you to pass individually by squeezing through. This is a small little space, but you're all uh, able to make it in there into what seems to be the lower floor of a store provision room. As you Luckily, no one's at, like is that large. Key? Yes. Okay. Luckily, we don't have Belvin. Yeah, I was gonna. That's who I was thinking of. I don't think you'd fit through something like that. Uh, even Ota has to kind of squeeze yeah, through she'd there probably, for the moment. She'd be the biggest out of all of us, I think. Mm. Yeah. So you see, uh, in here, that there are provisions stocked up on each corner. You can see that uh, the arrow slit-like windows do look out, uh, especially on the east side, look towards the battle that is raging over there. There is a stairwell that leads up 
uh, and there is a single door that a single open door and iron bands that opens uh, what seems to be inwards you know we the... uh we wouldn't have any information on the actual layout of the keep do we not entirely no i didn't think so you know that sharax does reside however in the chapel that's where she spends most of her time when she's at the at the keep the chapel which is in the middle i'm guessing we can only guess who knows if it's first floor second floor we don't know which floor, but the other ones are like towers, the main buildings, I think. Because on the th outside. You'd think she'd want to try to be higher. Maybe? I, possibly. I think we got to make a decision. we got to make it fast. Well, uh, so we're on the ground floor, right? Yes. I think we should try and get higher so we can like sort of look at the layout. Anyone we come across, maybe we we can force the information out of them. Yes. All right. We'll try to be up, the, up the stairs. Mm. Sneaky. Probably Amalia first, so she can take down anyone quickly if they if we need to. Okay. Can do that. Okay. So um, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to here is say refer to the second floor so currently where you are on the bottom part of the map that's the floor, the first floor okay so scroll on up to the second floor and i'll reveal that area okay um, where you find yourself into a empty barracks uh there are at the moment there there is no one up, no one up here in this room but you can hear and see out the windows that arches are lining uh, archers and crossbowmen are lining the castle walls. Some of them taking pot shots, others are bringing more bolts of provisions uh, around to the eastern side. But there is a heavy regiment and guard on the wall at the moment. We should avoid those guys. <laughs> we don't want to let the whole keep. Wondering if this would help us at all. Can we? Can we like try to peer through? each of these doors and kind of give a get a look at the buildings around yes, just, you... just crack the door yeah okay. yeah just kind of crack it or i figured it's is it a full door or is it like was it just an open uh, doorway so yeah it's a full door yeah then so then crack the door a bit and just kind of scan each side like buildings that yep. we can see so as you're being careful i need to make it a disadvantage because you're only having a small space to look at yep uh what are we making Perception, I'd say. Perception at disadvantage. Fifteen. Oh, the other one was a natural twenty. And put yourself by <laughs> the door you want to look at. Ah, uh, it was that one I wanted to look at. I'm wondering if locate creature would help at all. Mm. Very much so. Yeah. If you wanted to use it. <laughs> I'm just more worried because it's a thousand foot radius. How big is this bloody castle? Oh, yeah. It'll yeah, definitely get all of the keep. You'd, you'd get the whole keep. <laughs> you'd, at get, least. you'd get the whole oh, keep. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. So, uh, with that, you, divide, uh, you divine that who you're looking for. Sorry, well, he's on me. Or yeah, well, I mean, you're. <laughs> um. Shara. No, it's yeah. not full name though. What's the full name? Jorgenthrax. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna see if we can find Jorgenthrax. So Anthrax. Did I? If I print, I probably stuff that up with my real good. That's right. But and some other bloke with this. The only thing name. is too, I can only <laughs> sense when they're moving. Um. Uh... No, you so, can sense the, the direction. If the, yeah, so I can see where the direction is. But it, if the creature it, is moving, you know the direction of this movement. Yeah, it's only if they're um, moving. Yeah, yeah that's you, what I mean. It's kind of like a, a little like I'm assuming it's like on a mini map. It's a little like red dot, like you don't know. And and do you know and and when they are moving, it just has an arrow. Yep. Of the way <laughs> it's moving. <laughs> would I be able to sense like to say if they were on like say a five-story building? Would I know exactly which floor? Or would I just kind of know they're yes. in this section exactly. of that building? Exactly. You know this okay. exactly. All right. So, while you don't, 
due to some interference into the spell, you don't know, uh, learn her exact location, but you learn the area that she's in. And you understand if you look down on the bottom map for me, please, she is in this area here. Can I can I see that building from? Uh, probably not. Uh, not from where you. Yeah. Oh, from where you're peeking <laughs> through we, there, we can you can see like the roof or the wall. With my yeah. locate creature, would I? If I've just got a concrete wall in front of me, would I just be able to say that she's in a building over there, or would it just be like she's X amount of feet that way? Yeah, you'll be able to say that like she's over in that direction. She's like, okay. not, you know, you basically can sniff her out into the area that she's at. You don't yep. do, you get like an idea to see. Uh, to answer your question, Amalia, as you open the door up and look through, you do see that the roof kind of does block your view of it, but you yep. can see the top of what seems to be, you can, can see three stained glass windows, each uh, two by the side, another one on top of it, and in that little space uh, as the middle one's raised up you can see that there is a bronze circular shield with a iron rim on it you can also see the start of three claw mark of uh, five claw marks that go directly down the, the vertical face of the uh of the shield okay and i can't i can't really see if that's connected is it like two story does it look like two story yeah. Does it look connected? Is it pushed right up against another building? Yeah, pushed right up against the main keep. Okay. You can see as well that there are even there are some trees and some foliage on the on the courtyard floor. That, uh, make an insight check, actually. Oh, jeez. No. Man, what's the twenties? <laughs> I'm wasting so all our luck. With that, it's a 23. <laughs> with that, you can see that there are... that. If you were to go from from tree to tree to tree, those up on the wall would have a pretty hard time spotting you if you were being stealthy about it. From the ground, not like jumping from tree to tree. Jumping from tree to tree is a bad idea, but if the... Yes, okay. <laughs> if you were travelling um, from cover of tree to tree to tree, like using this cover one by one, yeah. Um, the guardsmen along the wall uh, on all sides would, you know, they see a tree, you're stealthing around. Pretty yep. good. Um, Amalia will go back. We need to go down, back downstairs. And she'll, yeah, pretty much, as she's looked back, Ikram's just going like, she's that way. <laughs> you need to go that way. That way. <laughs> So yeah, he <laughs> just, like, 130 foot that way. He basically points down. Yeah, it's about down there. And so, him, I was like, about down there. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, down the stairs. All right, refer back to yeah. the lower map, please. Your so map. would I have a better idea where she is the closer we get to her? Do you think? Yes. Uh, yes. Sort of For works. the moment, though, you still keep getting the impression the impression that she's still in that one same area. Like I said, there is interference with the spell. Okay. So, but you do realize that she's in that sort of area. Area. Julio's. All right. And Maya will relay the message of. Oh, that's um, a message. Um. Stick, stick to the trees if we can, just in case the um, archers decide to turn up their arrows on us. Okie dokie. Alright. All right. Uh, so, Amalia will go through this. Did you say it was an open doorway? No, no. It's a closed door that opens oh, in. Yeah. Um, Amalia will s kind of carefully open it up and have a quick look As outside. You peek on through. You do see a staircase uh, directly across from you that leads up into a upper level of the central building to your. Uh, to stage to stage left, so left on the screen, but to your character's right, you see that there is a closed port color skate, and on other, the other side are two iron soldiers, uh, from what you can see, guarding this port colors. Taking a look to your left, 
you can see that uh, standing by the stables are two iron soldiers uh, arguing. <laughs> you can also see that a small well stands in front of the chapel, uh, instead of in front of a chapel door. Uh, oh, there is the door. Okay, cool. You see that from this door leads out into a open uh, inner courtyard, uh, a large open space. A number of small apple trees, you can now see that the <coughs> apple trees provide this pleasant bit of respite from the rain as well, as it's uh, beginning to bucket down. Lightning cracks above. Alright, um, she'll kind of lean back to everyone else. Out the door, to the right, <coughs> well wait, to, to the left. Okay. Two guards arguing right now. It's an open courtyard, but I can see the the door to the chapel from here. If is, we, if we, is that gate closed? It yes. is a closed gate. Closed okay. gate. If we can, and it's like it's solid. It's not like a, a grate. It's a sort of it's, gate. It's it's a grate. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's a portal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're if we're quiet enough, I reckon we could take down those two guards on our way through. Get to the chapel. If it's an open courtyard, I think we'll need to take them out. Very much so. Hmm. All right. Well, Malia can take out one quietly. Who else can probably take one out quietly? Maybe Otar? No one else is really good at... Yeah, stealth's not mine. Stealthy takeouts. Yeah, can, can Otar... Uh, well, Oath is a battle mage. She can certainly try, but there might be a fireball inv involved as well. <laughs> um, but she can just well, want to avoid the fireball. Well, she could definitely go in uh, with her glaive and be attacking. Uh, I'm always just going to ask, like, can can all of you maybe focus on one? I reckon I can take the other one out. Will the pass without trace sort of muffle? Uh... Yes casting and stuff like even that. even with a lot of the rain and stuff too I yes. figured it's, yeah so as long as we're not creating big bright lights like fireballs and stuff yes i mean if you want to time the uh bright lights of the of the lightning cracking <laughs> you want to try time it with your fireball or <laughs> sounds like uh, that's uh sure shank redemption <laughs> yeah i mean like cracking I, the thing with the thunder i will admit it'd be pretty cool if rob just like uh call lightning you know, and uses the storm as like a. This is literally prime condition for you to use that ability, Rob, as well. Yes. Is that super obvious? To you, to Ikram? Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, like. <laughs> oh my god, this got struck by lightning. Wow. wow. Yes. Yeah, but like, it's <laughs> a mean, yes. there's a storm going on. Like, like, someone, and they're in full plight. You'd think yeah. there'll be, like, you know, a bit of a bad omen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, but, you can try it. No, I, but st I mean, I'm just saying. No, that's like, right. That sounds cool. No, but I mean, if if everyone just <laughs> use use as minimal resources as possible, mm -hmm. if he's all focus one, I reckon I can take the other one out. Are we? Are we ready? We need so, to save our strength. Is that a no to the lightning? Need it would be cool, strength. but I would say save your spell slot. Fair enough. Yeah. Alrighty. All right, we're going to go in. She'll pull the um, door open and she'll just quickly follow the wall straight straight to behind the closest guy because she figures get to him and then everyone else has range. Yep. Okay. okay. That's like a plan. I will prepare to cast. She'll touch. What's their vision like from where they are? Like, is it like, can they see like your full? One guy can't see you at all, whereas the other, because his back turn is turned towards you, whereas the other is kind of like, you know, looking at his friend, uh, has an awareness of them being there, but also at the same time it's raining. You're past without trace, so like, you know, it's a little obscured. Which one's the one that can't really, that can't, that has our back to, their back to us? That one on the map. Closest one. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering. Well, I was wondering if I should run in with the fucking crippler right behind you. 
Bang. Doesn't it make a noise though when it like explodes? Oh, only if you use his charges on it. Which is Fox specialty. <laughs> but that's using a resource. You don't have to use a resource. Not on All right. these guys. <laughs> All right, Meta. No, she. Uh, she said though. that. She she said that before. <laughs> don't use any resources. We need to save our strength. Yeah. We're about to fight fucking big old dragon. Probably. All right. Well, okay, Amalia... actually, what I'm going to do... Sorry, you do your thing. And no, I'll... Well, Amalia's going to go out and she's going to get up behind this guy. And then everyone else, I'm going to say, pops out at pretty much the same time. Yeah. And then I'm just, just... What would you like me to roll? Do you want me to roll stealth to get up to him, or...? You can roll stealth to get up to him, plus 10. All of us, or just... Yeah, everyone. You, you currently, like I said, you oh, have pass without a trace going right now. Yeah, cool. So it's just a straight roll, plus 10. Yes. Sure, I haven't got twenty-five. Fucking Brad, three. <laughs> He's wasting his life. I know. Point. I don't want it to be. You're gonna die in this dragon Ooh. fight. Yeah. Look, probably. <laughs> twenty-four. Okay, so everyone's very selfie leading on up as you go to attack these two, uh, these two. As you come on all up. What do you want to do to these two poor souls? I want to use sedated arrow. And to see if that works. Shoot on. Oh my Bar guy. Yeah. So we, when you use option, the target is affected by sleep spell 9d8s. I don't know what. So roll so 9d8. That... So you do your damage, and then if the 9d8 is higher than their current hit points, they go to sleep. Okay. So bam. And then. And you'd have advantage as well. Oh, do I? I've been, hit, I'll just been roll... hidden. I'll just roll twice. <laughs> For the first hit? Uh -oh. Oh, ignore that middle one. That's the crippler. Well, thirty-one time. So we'll deal. We'll deal with the mother's bow shot first. Oh, right. righto. So yeah, we'll we'll deal with Rob first. We'll do Rob first. So Sorry as guys. the mother's bow shoots out, yep, on that thirty-one, bam, that's gonna hit. Ninety-eight, and nothing else added to it. It's just nine and ninety-eight. Just so, yeah, ninety. Take, take 12 damage, and then if 98's higher than his current 45. hit points, he goes to sleep. The arrow lodges into his shoulder and just uh, uh, crashes down onto the ground softly. His friend's just like, whoop, as I just goes, huh? As Amalia comes up to him, and the first one is going to miss, and then I'll look. Wait, what? Yeah, the first one's going to miss. On a 15. Oh. No, sorry. Yeah. I didn't see them. Uh, it does a 16 hit. 16 does I didn't not see Brad's roll. Does not hit. So he only takes uh, 21 points of damage then. Right. One hit. 21 points of damage from one hit, but this guy is still standing up and he turns around and basically and then, swings his sword, goes to swing his not sword yet. around. <laughs> Halfway through swinging his sword around, Kazim. <laughs> Fucking roll bad. <laughs> You coat his leg in the frost. He's still, that sword's still coming around. Uh, can I do something? Yes, you can. <laughs> we ray of frost as well. Spring on him. A double ray of frost goes out from our teeth. One on the left leg. Remember, it's oh, oh, wait, yeah. it's at advantage as well. Yeah, I was gonna say if it's. Wait, so we'll roll again. Yeah, yeah. roll that again. Just in case you get another. Oh yeah. Okay. I want to save my luck. <laughs> okay, it's fine. <laughs> I saved my so life. So on a 17, you just spray him as he's, as he's not holding his shield, wearing his half plate. Um, as you see, it's down but uh, down beside him. So yeah, that's going to hit two for 15 points of cold damage. And with that, he basically freezes up. He's just like... Ugh! And he basically just leans backwards. Based, uh, frostbitten, in a sense. My sedation only lasts a minute, so I don't know if there's a way we can knock him out further. <laughs> we can knock him to death. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is a, there is a, there is a way. <laughs> I was just letting you all know that it's like it's only a minute. We haven't got long. Well, Amalia would just walk up to the sleeping guy then. Just, <laughs> he'd be like, "Great work, great work, Ikrim." <laughs> just goes <laughs> twist. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. if you hit them when they're asleep, it's an auto crit. Yes. 
Oh, okay. Well, so, I mean, and it's and it's advantage, so and it's simple yeah. enough for you to end uh, this person's person's life existence. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she pretty much oh, just well. goes stab and then twists it. <laughs> so, and then just gets rid of the blood. Bloodlust, the archer. This is warm, man. Mm. Uh, the lightning cracks again. Uh, this, could have been my call lightning. This time, streaks of <laughs> lightning travel overhead as if they are going down on the eastern side of the hill, crackling into um, what you can only assume is the battle raging on to the east. We need, we need to hurry. Macaf, mm-hmm. you receive a sending. It's from Reese Futis. She's above the clouds, and she basically says, I see you down there. I have you covered in case anything goes wrong. We believe Sharax is in that chapel. If she but tries, stay there. Of course, if she tries to escape via air, I'll pin her down. Thank you. Can we hear any of this, or is this just you guys? Send him. Just, um, oh, okay. McCath. Uh, she will, McCath will wait till the, f- wait, was that guy dead? Have we killed that guy yet? Yeah. Uh, Cass uh, put up a, his major image um, to appear like they're still arguing. <laughs> Just oh, hide, hide nice the corpses. Idea, <laughs> so you leave... Uh, you leave. That. So is that casting a major image or is that leaving no, an already? that'll be one of my stored ones. All right, how many of your stored ones do you have left? Oh, fucking seven or six after this. <laughs> one or two. <laughs> That's a good uh, yeah. reason to use them. Um, I mean, we could have, instead of killing him, we could have just tied him up and dragged him back in. Now that I think about that's it. That's more effort. <laughs> that, that is. We, we, are, we are literally on a time crunch We're on right our now. schedule. Um, yeah, um, the calf will relay. Arif- is fun. above us right now. So if she tries to escape via the air, she will try and grab her. Well... There's a good chance of that happening. Mm-hmm. So, it's you see happen. now, hanging over the chapel is a large brass circular shield uh, with an iron band around its rim. A claw has been raked down its face from top to bottom with five of the lines, all uh, with the five claw lines, each the color of the chromatic heads of Tiat. You see a large... Um, fairly decorative iron bound oak door stands these doors are huge they stand um, 15 feet tall by 15 feet wide and take up the whole uh, basically super huge chapel with a looming crack of lightning what would you like to do Uh, Ikram, you get the sense that yes, she's closer now, beyond those doors. So we're right in front of the doors, yeah. You can be, yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, definitely make our way in front of the doors. As soon as we're in front of the doors. Did you say as in she's closer, as in because we've moved closer, or as in she's moved closer to us as well? You've moved closer. Oh, okay. Uh, want to check these doors for locked? All right. Make and a, and trapped. Make an investigation check. I help them out, or even do the check. Uh, you can help them with it. You can help her with because she's <laughs> she's just taking the uh, initiative here. Yep. So she, with Casimir's assistance, uh, as you both use your uh, expert arcane knowledge, there is a glyph of warding here set to stun the first person mm-hmm. who is not affiliated with the Iron Circle on the doors. Uh, so I know Glyph Awarding. Could I tell if it's cast as a higher level? Yes. It is? Was that a yes it is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, There's definitely a magic s- trap here. Yeah. This could be difficult to dispel. We should look for another entrance. Make an Arcana check. Uh, t- 20. Uh, on your understanding of it, you believe that 
with a high with a high enough cast of a dispel magic, the eff effects just on this door, though temporary, will disperse. Yes, but that's what I'm worried about. Is it worth using a resource here, or is there another entrance? But if she's she's smart, odds are all entrances have this. I'll give it a shot. Um, do I have any inkling of how powerful it is? Or your, I have no idea. Uh, it's you know it's definitely level four and over. Can't pinpoint it, but you don't think it's going to be. You think it's around mid tier. Could we get a uh, body or is... something and? <laughs> Fake eye, you know, like in the there movie. is there is no way um, <laughs> Amalia can eyeball or whatever. There's no way Amalia can assist in like imbuing magic dispel to magic the dispel. You can actually, if you want Ooh. to, if the, you can tell me a way that Amalia would like to uh, assist Casimir in the use of his dispelling this glyph, this ward, especially since you also practice in. <laughs> permanent magical effects basically learn me uh, memorizing them mm. you can definitely uh, I mean Macaf would also be willing to help but I see Amalia's got there first well I mean all, all three of us from yeah, one all, from one yeah. side uh Casimir's getting the spell get the magic in his hands Amalia's just gonna put her hand on one side of the magic and then are, are we doing like a like a spirit bomb like are we like we're all we're all, yeah, we're we're all putting bomb. our we'll energy in. In. Into yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and then we just yeah amalia's tattoos will light up and she's just putting forth some of her ma own magic into the dispel her aid yeah Azimir. yeah mccaff will also do the same all right with that the spell breaks on the door as the uh as Kazumi okay works across the one main section of where the uh, glyph was warded at first uh, as you see that there is a crack in the arcane layer of magic that goes permeating through the door and shatters just in a little glitter of light it also dispels the alarm spell shit fuck yeah Hold on, you need to roll me. A, you need to roll me a yeah. D20. That's what I was, I was gonna say. <laughs> okay. You got you got advantage at this moment. Okay. You have a really fucking high check. So it's an intelligence yeah. cast twenty three. Like I said, piece of cake. <laughs> Definitely. With that, who wants to open the door? Casimir. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that dispelled it. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm confident in my magic, alright? So I'll open it. <laughs> Do you actually touch the door? Ooh! <laughs> yeah. this hey, I'm not Gregor, yeah, I touch the door. <laughs> exactly! Like, I'm just very we curious. We do need a Gregor. I'm just very uh, curious after that, because usually Casimir's using Mage Hand for every, yeah. everything he sees. I'm just like, is this where Casimir actually goes beyond? <laughs> He's wearing a glove, alright? It, he like, actually <laughs> touched something. Well, I mean, he technically pushes it with his tentacles, so I mean, does he class it as his own body at this point? Yeah. Either way, the door's thrown <laughs> open. You can smell a rush of bile wind that pushes out pushes uh, you out and back a little bit like a heavy breath pushing you out on your heels the smell of just absolutely archaic billows out of the uh, room with a green fog that lingers on the ground as you inhale, inhale it it's fine because you have had a hero's feast yeah. hero's feast <laughs> and I'm just going to uh, move you all Again, if you just bear with me for mm -hmm. one second. Ooh. Actually, I'm going to put you here. <laughs> well. Oh man, that's pretty cool. Oh, shit. Oh, hi. Hello there. She pretty. What big nostrils you have. You're like a big old fucking oh, the better horn fang. Oh, the better to smell you chin fang. That bloody cools the blood over the... It's pretty cool. Who was in that seat? Yeah, and like, 
and dripping down. And then what are these balls floating around her? What oh, yeah, she had those. She had, she had the. She had the thing around her. Doing? Before I... So, you see an incredibly well decorated church. An altar stands at the far end of the room under a vaulted ceiling decorated with paintings of various divine myths. All of them desecrated. Many of the paintings have been defaced with an emerald green cloth that lies over the stone altar with a large brazen shield inscribed with the five claw marks, each coloured in the chromatics. Behind that is a stone chair, a throne of a sort, that overlooks it, smeared with blood as the blood runs down from the chair all the way to the floor as if something's been dragged up there to which you can see pinned to the which you can see pinned to the throne under a massive green claw coiled in shadows white fur lined White fur lines the armor and the, with black plates. Tabaxi. The claw throws Sandstorm out onto the uh, space before you. See this gigantic dragon head in the shadows snarling around her. Uh, six floating orbs as she reels her claw back disappears into the shadow alongside of her head you can see this from afar you're only about halfway towards the entrance of the church at this present time mind you say like around there to be brutally honest so where, wait, where's Sandstorm? Laying on the ground out here. Uh, wait, when's the last time we saw? When's the last time we saw Sandstorm? Just before. <coughs> when last, he picked us up. Yeah, last time you saw Sandstorm was just before as you picked with the G Force. With the G Force, as you picked him up, or as he picked you up, hmm. and you laid, basically. He went back off with the G-Force into battle. You guys then teleported um, and then went underground. Can I... I just want to confirm if it's actually Sandstorm. Can I use the earrings of Sending to try and communicate with it? Yes. Sandstorm, where are you right now? Nothing. Dial up tone. Yep. I'm sure he's just busy. <laughs> you see that the dragon's cult symbols hangs in place in honor above. The black drapes affixed to the windows give the area gloom. You can see t- affixed to the altar as well is the crown of Mesro. It sits there. This stuffy atmosphere in the room it also holds the stench of a hot pitch and sulfur. As you begin to um, approach, two infernal beings line the sides and just watch their eyes piercing through like um, like head like headlights in fog. Behind the altar, stepping out of the shadows. In the dark robes, adorned with heavy gold and brass jewelry, the feminine figure of Sharax, her face covered by long dark hair, she flicks it to the side to reveal the green taint on her face. She looks down at you all as you approach. tricky 
Get as close as you like. For this day will end with closed eyes. And she's speaking at you right now. Her eyes are closed. Previously when you saw him, her eyes were just milky white. Yeah, well, I think we knew she was blind. Yeah. <laughs> at least like her eyes are blind. I assume she still has blind sight like drag other dragons do. This... But she can't actually see through her eyes. She, yeah, just looking out in a direct, uh, in, just looking out into the place. She raises her arms. For this day will end with closed eyes and open minds. For her majesty watches today. I'll be glad once my role is complete. And she puts her hand down on the crown. You see that there is a spark of magic from her hands. Roll initiative. Oh, fuck. Mm. Fuck! <laughs> Click your tokens. Oh. Yes. Mm. Oh! So do I is... roll initiative that high? Ikram! <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is that? Today's yeah, the what day. Is... Ah. What is that? <laughs> Curl up in fatal position. <laughs> I don't want to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All of us are just like, fuck that oh, woman, shit. fuck her. <laughs> We're all just frothing at the mouth together, and then Ikram's like, oh, my. I don't want to hit her first. Ikram, Ikram, Ikram. One shot. <laughs> One shot. Her. It's all right, Ikram. Amalia goes. I just okay, cast a dated arrow and just knock her out. Yeah, one shot. Oh, that oh, was easy. My only weakness. <laughs> <laughs> power of sedatives <laughs> bear with me while I get everyone rolling the bad guys gotta roll now I'm scared we're in danger what's the thing that's rolled in the three I can't even see that on the map the oh three. there it is never mind oh that's one of the baddies yeah I just couldn't see where they were then oh, I just realized oh they yes. there we were, we're faster <laughs> Mostly, tell me why you all are going faster. I mean, all the things are wrong. I selected my character token, and it is not up on the turn order. Just saying. Yeah, okay, Rob. <laughs> nice Fuck, try. We're so, we're so far away, though. I like to think that. Oh, is that wait, is that the scale? Yep. Wait, what the fuck? It did not look this big from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. And that was to scale. <laughs> I could hit Ikram, uh, Sandstorm from here. Stop sleeping on the job. Roll that in. Uh, I, I will admit, if you... No, that's probably bad. I was going to say, if there was like an arrow of like banishment or something, banishes him for like a minute. That way That'd be you... pretty handy. That we do way, have yeah, that, that arrow of fate. Yeah. It's a three time use only thing. Uh, I think yeah, would that be worth using on no, this? It, no, only on Tiamat. Remember, oh, remember true. it does bulk damage so. on... Yeah, yeah. Like, isn't it like, uh, relative to... Divine beings. I will, I will ask something. Is it being shot three times, or is it just it being used three times? So say you use it as a lance. Use it as a lance. Uh, perfectly fine. But under uh, what the... It does give the prerequisites that, so that give it that power. So if you're going to okay. use that check, that's the arrow for that cause that will use it up, basically, and then begin to. So it it. Has that's an optional use. It's like uh, Ikram's charges and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So it has to be shot with a bow in order to to use its power. Okay. Cool. I just didn't know if you like hit someone with it, it just uses one of them. <laughs> yeah, if it meets the criteria for the power to be used, it will be used. So if that's any dragon, any primordial, any divine being of any pri oh, primal sort, okay. it will automatically spend a charge. Okay. okay. So, so if it meets criteria, it's always used. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so it could if I did. Could be used you currently have it, eh? Okay, cool. Pretty sure hmm? I'm cast got it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you got knocked the fuck out. Yeah. She <laughs> was like. No. <laughs> no, I don't know. no. Yoink. <laughs> I'm still not up on the turn or oh I got eighteen. Bruh. 
call trying to scam you. <laughs> so <smug. laughs> the best roll I've ever gotten. <laughs> it's the only time you roll that high. All right, let's see. Um, because we're gonna die. Let's get that music going, fam, and let's let's die. go die, guys. Yeah. Okay, first up, Amalia Midnight. Uh, Amalia is just going to start shining, shining brightly, and two feathered wings come out like of her back, and a thin silver halo goes above her head, uh, and then she will move. How high are the ceilings here? 40 feet up. Yeah, big old cathedral. Big old cathedral. Yeah. So she'll move 30 feet and be about 10 feet in the air. Okay. And dash, remember? Nah, it took an action to do it. Oh, true. Yeah. Okay, next That's up. Karen. Casimir. No, Ikram. <laughs> oh, Ikram. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to steal your thunder, man. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Uh, I'm probably I'm gonna follow suit, um, except I am also going to change into an elk if I can. Who's suit? You want to change into an elk? So elk, uh, a- angel, angel form elk. Elk oh. room. So you. Oh, um, what is it like? Or is the... that too many? Nope. The... No, because one Old you're changing. One's a bonus a... action. Your wild angel. shape bonus is bonus action. And action. So yep, yeah, you can change to a beast or an elemental is a bonus yep. action. And I'm going to move 30 foot as well. Um, elk room. So you, so sh- you should have access to elk room. Uh, negative. So your, uh, so your elk has wings. Yeah. Yes. And headlights for eyes. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> There's my temporary hit points from Hero's Feast. Dude, you got your high over, beams or... on. It should, yes. <laughs> We got seven, didn't we? Is that right? You uh, probably rolled that. Everyone yeah. rolled individually. Oh, I think I got seven. Okay. It just adds to your max HP. <laughs> you yep. did roll. You did roll pretty low. I really do remember. Yeah, I did roll shit. I only rolled nine, but I'm, I'm not seven. full HP either. So. I'm imagining has, if, for those who play Breath of the Wild, uh, the Lord of the Mountain, the weird okay. like ghost deer thing that oh, you can find okay. that's what like i'm imagining it's like yeah. this weird basically yeah it's like a yes it's like a spirit oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, it, and instead it's of like horns it's, it's got like it's got horns doesn't it it does it's, but it, but it's like a leafy. it looks leafy yeah okay Not just it the... looks like leafy horns and it's got four eyes mad yeah. that you couldn't capture him you can only ride him around yeah. All right. Uh, Casimir. All right. Uh, I will head up 30 feet this way. Are these like stone benches? Yes. Okay. And then I am going to send out one of my stored major images around Sandstorm. As you get there in that area, from beneath you, you see a, a rune glow. Ah, man. I need you to... Actually, no, you don't even get a save. Very well. <laughs> but it is okay. Get as, wrecked. <laughs> as you feel a wave of laugh, uh, of a wave of sleep and sedative come over you, but you brush it off because you're too hot, you're... Yes. HP too high. HP too high at the Ooh. moment. HP too high. Not enough for this thickness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes. Okay. So the sleep rune doesn't get me. Mm-hmm. Right. So cool. I send out my these shadows that stretch out from Casimir and shoot up towards Sandstorm because it has a one twenty foot range. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to form 10 foot adamantine cube around Sandstorm and make it real. All right. Just to protect him. Put him in jail. You're going to the locker. <laughs> uh, that, that, uh, surely that's going to trigger Sharax. 
Does that block so, magic or anything? Or like bang? Uh, it blocks like anything that would go like in a line to him. Adam, yeah, it's Adam and and you can't see inside it. It'd just be like a pitch black box inside it. He starts freaking out. Well, he's ah. fucking KO'd at the moment anyway, so it's fine. We we don't know if he's only KO'd. Quite well, honestly. It only lasts for a minute, so it's all right. Yeah, he's in a chest. <laughs> uh, Ota also um, makes her way dashing down, passing um, the calf, saying, I'll keep you safe. Keep behind me. I'm your shield. And she's got a glaive up forward. Let's see. What's her range? That's a glaive, not a shield. <laughs> Jeez, a, shield. a glaive is just a really small shield on a stick. <laughs> if running... she spins it really fast. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> running forward, Ota uh, wastes no time and just throws a fireball at Sharax. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, I'm glad I boxed up uh, Sandstorm now. <laughs> Deck save incoming for Sharax. How far did she move? Oh, wait, no, she can't use that because she used her action to dash. Yeah, I was gonna. S wait, she didn't need to dash though, I don't think. Well, because she was she was behind you all up here. Man. Right, so she'd be you there. changing the rolls because she failed or... the save. <laughs> she she could actually fireball. It's 120 feet for fireball, isn't it? 150. It's 150. Oh, she could easily hit her, hit her still. There you go. And then that happens. The fireball goes off. She fails to save, and Sharax takes 34 fire damage. Nice. Take that, you stupid dragon. <laughs> <laughs> What's Casimir? <laughs> like, I, do you say it out loud or under your breath? As the fireball goes out. off, <laughs> you see that there is a vacuum of the flame that go, uh, that is pulled up, like a vacuum sucking in the flame from something... Uh, orbiting around her, lessening the effect of the spell. Ooh. That's similar to my cube's effect. It can absorb magic. Mm. You can't see it, but you saw the effect take place. Macath, you're up. Kaz would um, telepathically relay that to everyone, that it seems like it's an effect protecting her from magic, similar to his cube. <sighs> But I'm only magic. That's fine. It only lessens the effect, not it only, nullifies it. It only works on sharks too, and there's likely a limit to it. If we just bombard her, hmm. we need to take out the other two as well. These, what are these things anyway? Ah, uh, they are Bob Dean, Bob Devils. Ooh. Bob Devils. Okay. For a second, I thought they were the viney things that we fought in her lair. I thought it was going to be two of them. <laughs> like the narrow veins. <laughs> no, oh, shit. Uh, not that. Not that dude. <laughs> um, I'm going to fly up into the air. Just above kind of where everyone no, just above um, Ota. Hmm. And I am going to cast a Ice Storm. Ooh, Ooh go for it. On top of her. Oh, crap. All right, so she's going to make a deck save, I believe. But um, uh, at level four. No. Nice. All right, deck save. Swear about you. You're just chucking that straight on Sharax? Yeah. Okay. okay, so sorry I didn't have uh, that, that one shown, but uh, it was a nice. 22 on her side. Damn it! <sighs> Bitch. No. So she's going to take half damage on that. Oh, that's not even anything. That was bad. Look how bad that bludgeoning. Didn't, didn't you then... say level 4? Yeah. Is it a level 4? It is, it a, is level. a level 4. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, I still miss yeah. So again, ah, yes. uh, a portion of the spell is uh, sucked in and directed <gasps> into another, uh, a in, into a uh, into an area around her, but this time it's like on another side of her. Uh, oh, okay. So it's like that did like nothing. Sorry, right. like every damage. Every little bit counts at this point. 
I think I, Ice Storm has a different effect as well, right? It's like difficult. Yeah, to, it um, difficult causes to difficult to rain okay. until my turn. Okay. Yep. Her turn. Oh no. Well, this is fun. And she puts her hand over a section of the gem of the uh, one of the jewels on the crown. Um, the black opal that you first discovered in the fight between yourselves and Nightstone. You see there is a spark of electricity coming from the, from the gem itself into her hand. And it energizes as the lightning crackles up her arm. And she sends a blast of lightning out towards Ikra. Oh no. <laughs> As the blast then separates, Bird. breaking off into sections to meet up with the rest of the party as she casts Chain Lightning. Bitch. Alright, three bots. She, she can pick three people. The first one's going to be Casimir, the next one's going to be um, Amalia, and the next one's going to be Ota. So I need deck save from you, from o from. Amalia, Ota, and uh, what's it called? Casimir. <laughs> Do I not get one? Um, oh, I no. you... It was targeted on Ikram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah how does that work? So, yes, you so it, it definitely hits you. It definitely hits you. Yeah, does that mean it's like, am I guaranteed hit? I don't do a deck save? No, no, deck save. No, you do you a deck save. save. Oh, okay. So, I don't do a deck save. You but don't do damage. <laughs> so, you don't get hit. Yeah. No, Ikram. Only one shot. Uh, what's your what's your actual deck save as an elk though? Sorry. What's your dex as an elk? Oh, true. Oh, that's what that that. It, it, that is okay. Yeah. I was just curious. Okay. Sure. So between it's uh, the exact same. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> between Amalia, <laughs> me and an elk. Well, that is so sad. Uh, between Amalia and Casimir, you just make <laughs> the save. Yep. Lucky. <laughs> yep. <laughs> As Ikram, you take the full force of the damage, which is forty-seven lightning damage, and it sends you back into your uh, human form, carrying over. Seven... Just the exact amount, too. That's so annoying. Well, I mean, take like no damage, though. So. You carry yeah, over. No, it's like the exact amount. Yeah, you so do annoying. carry seven points over into your normal form, but you are now out of uh, Elkram. Right. Oh no, because of my temp I had seven temporary hit points. Oh well, there you go. There That's you what go. I made was exactly yeah, enough. Perfect. I was like, God damn it! That's uh, fine. It took the hit for you. That's the point of it. True. Mm. What has more HP? And then you have another. Don't you, you have two elemental. charges? If you went elemental, it's the stronger. But yeah, but they're not rock room. Uh, uh, so what's what's half of forty-seven? Half of forty-seven is twenty-three. 23 Oh god, just open up for him. Yeah, 23. I'm gonna yeah. use absorb elements as well to half that. Ah, uh, so am I. I take 11. Okay. I am also gonna use absorb elements. Pew, pew. Yeah, nice work. You think what I'm thinking, Caster 1? <laughs> so, I think I am. The <laughs> devils do come Magic. charging in towards you, <laughs> and they both uh, summon flames to their hand and hurl it. One hurls one at Casimir, the other one hurls, hurls one at Amalia. Um, I just remembered, I should be... I'm behind cover as well, so I should be, like, getting a bonus to Aren't save straight. No, no, no. Because okay. I triggered that rune on the ground. I, I said I was going down behind the stone bench. Okay, so yeah, you're at half cover, so you got a plus three against this attack roll. Alright, so 21? <laughs> we'll actually... <laughs> Thank fuck. <laughs> Because then I'd be at 23. Because I can't use shield. Lucky. Uh, and yeah, against Amalia for a 7. Oh, yes! yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you just dodge out of the way while the other one just goes flying towards. Um, next up, it is Amalia. Your turn. Revenge. <laughs> um, Amalia's just gonna land back land kind of back on the ground and uh she's gonna look look over at casimir she's 
and she's just gonna um, telepathically say, "This is this is a first time casting, but I hope you'll back me up with it." And she'll start casting a large glyph in front of her, and she'll also cast another glyph in the side here. The first glyph st- um, bursts into lightning, and she kind of holds it there, and she puts the second glyph into the other, and then the lightning actually um, explodes back onto herself, and then covered in it, and then it shrinks down, and then you start you see her her arms and her legs are a pure electric energy. It starts trickling off. Her wings as well are like lightning. And her hair is just like crackling and stuff standing up and she has a very uh similar look to uh the haste spell and she's uh she's cast her own her own spell that she made Damn. oh hell yeah it's a new form of spell you see Mm. And that was the extra glyph up, up on her shoulder area that she uh, drew. And with her extra movement, she's going to quickly dart next to this this horn devil and make make one blade attack as her extra action. Mm-hmm. Does a 15 hit? 15 does hit. Oh, yes. yeah. Nice. Just. Nice. All right, so I'm halving the cold damage. Um, because it seems to be resistant to cold. Hmm. Yep. What about lightning? And uh, she and also it does has the lightning damage as well. And it is not resistant to lightning, I believe. No, it's not. Um, it takes... 22 damage then. Yeah. Does it seem like the highest of demons of devils? I thought worse. <laughs> yeah, we have actually. <laughs> uh, Ikram, your turn. Um, what kind of damage does this dragon do? Sorry, I was just reading my small poison. Vest. Green dragon's poison based. Okay. And are they weaker? What's their weakness? They don't have any. Dragons don't okay. have weaknesses. They're just okay. fucking strong. <laughs> are they immune to anything except for poison? Um, from what you know, they are not immune to anything. Okay. Just, just their main stern. element. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to... So, yeah, we're aiming to take out both of these guys first, I guess. I think it'll be easier that way. Oh, can we just call that 30 foot? <laughs> we have five foot reach. Oh, yeah, sure. um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to lunge it. Lunge at this thing and smash it with the cripple here. <laughs> going to cripple it? <laughs> cripple it. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, nice, mate. First natty. Oh. Use ch- <laughs> Are you using your charges? Um, I'll use two charges. Because they crit as well. They crit yeah. as well. <laughs> I just don't want to use them all yet, you know? No, no, that's, no, that's, good. that's right. No, that's fair. You, yeah. That's... So we're only two D8? I tend to go ham and use all of them in one So hit. what is it? To, so do. it's a, a D8 <clears throat> a charge, is it? Yep. So, so I don't need to D8. roll, do I? 2d8. No, you get 2d8 so you roll plus it. 16. Yeah. Oh, I thought I just automatically went. No, no, no. <laughs> plus 16. Those rolls aren't great. So plus an extra 20. 20, for a total 40 of 20 plus 20, so 40 damage. And I'm going to say that you blow this thing back. Uh, at l- you blow this thing, ba- thing back 10 feet on, uh, on that hit. As it just nice. goes flying backwards. Damn. But is it crippled? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> it hits the wall and yeah, staggers it hit that down. wall. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah no, it's just like. <sighs> I also deal radiant damage to it. Oh, you do oh, it yeah, equal actually, to your no. level, I think. So do I. So 
uh, th whatever I hit took another 14 damage too. So the extra radiant damage equals your level. Yeah. So another so 14 on both. Yeah. Radiant. And with that, it burns as the radiant energy uh, slowly seeps into it as you are full angel mode at the moment. It's like your wings basically curl, have begun to curl around it and it just shrieks from it and then immolates itself just <laughs> as it begins to fall down. That one did. Uh, mine also took an extra 14 damage. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it ain't dead. Nope. She's fair. I didn't crit on it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, I think that'll end my turn, eh? No, right. Next up is Chasm. Oh, how's. Sorry, one request. Can we put health bars on everyone? I can only see mine and Kaz's. Yeah, I'm the same. No. It's <laughs> rude. <laughs> Not right now. Maybe next second. <laughs> I'm dragging it. Damn it. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so this guy's still up. How's he looking? I'm fairly beaten. Okay. Um, I'm also going to trust that to Amalia, I think. Or even Otar. Mm -hmm. Or Macaz. Because I don't really have many good spells. Because I think it's going to be resistant to cold and fire, which are my main damage types. Um, you do you, ma'am. Just from our previous experience with devils. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hmm. Doing. Thinking, thinking real fast. I am so when Sharax absorbed magic before, did it look like it was absorbing from two different places? Uh, make an intelligence check because it did seem like it uh, did absorb from two different places. I need to lock down that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fuck's sake. <laughs> What'd you roll? Seven. Brad took all his luck. It could possibly yep. be two different places. Mm, I'm not sure. You're not 100% sure. Well, I am going to try and test it out. So I'll shoot another fireball at her. All right. Oh, that didn't work. Master with a fireball. 29. She has to make a deck save. So again, uh, she's going to roll a 11, so she fails. And again, just, and then, closely just, observe. As you closely observe, um, make a make an intelligence check or a perception check. Make a perception check. No. If you're watching it. So she's going to take... Uh, can I use a luck die? Use a luck die. <laughs> Come on, Brad. Give me my luck back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's fair. Rob was 15. the one that Thanks, nat 20 last time. Uh, on Brad, a... You're the one that's rolling all of the nat 20s. On a 15, you can see that the source that's absorbing the, f the magic from the spell, reducing its effect, is rotating. It's moving. Yeah, so it's the same one, but it's just yes. rotating. Okay. Uh... It looks like one of the orbs. Telepathic, that tell people. Looks like one of the orbs is absorbing the magic. We can probably overload it, or maybe even take it out with a physical attack. And then Kaz is going to run over behind this bench, so we're not all grouped up. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Ota, so just give me a second. That is purely a guess on Kazumi's part, by the way. Because the orbs are, like, floating around. Yep. I assume if he can knock it away from her, no, it's fine. then it might, like, uh, block its effect. Ota runs down on the other side of uh, Kazumi and uses a spell to blast this creature. 
and it's just going to be a easy fire bolt. Number 20, it's going to hit for 16 fire, and actually no, she's going to, I've already said it. <laughs> oh. She does know better, and she's there for help and support. <laughs> so it doesn't I'm do just anything. An idiot. It does. It does. It does damage. Okay. It does to a greatest extent that you uh, you wish it for. Yep. 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 Um, is it just fire? Like the fire and cold? Or is it just magic in general? Seen. Fire and cold. Because mm -hmm. lightning was fine, but fire and cold they're resistant to. Yes. Uh, Macaf, From what we're seeing. Your turn. Uh... Um. Let me check my spells. Um, and everything I have is cold and fire. Um, yep. <laughs> why don't you make steam? <laughs> that'll make a great combo for some thunder. <laughs> that'll make a great combo for some thunder damage. <laughs> I can't cast both. <laughs> Not with that attitude. <laughs> Technically, you could because you're, you're a sorcerer. sorcerer. Yeah. Oh yeah. I... Oh yeah. I have so much stuff other than casting. Um. Amplifiers casting spells. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, okay, that's the thing I have. Um, oh, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do. Um, I'm just going to fly and kind of uh, do what Casimir has done and I'm going to come down and sort of be behind. Take cover? Yeah. Um, and then I mean I could still hit it with something. Do you have magic missile? No I don't. What have I done? I didn't even provide you with the basics. <laughs> you haven't given me... There's no magic missile, there's no fireball. <laughs> but I have blink. I can also blink. <laughs> Keeps my eyes. It costs cost <laughs> me a third spell slot to blink. Blink's pretty good though. Because it makes you like invulnerable half the time, after your turn. Yeah. But it takes your concentration. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Lasts a full minute. Blink doesn't have a duration. Well, it does have a minute duration, but it's not concentration. Ah. You're right. It just depends on what you roll. Yep, you are correct, though. You know what? I'm just going to shoot a, f a, a fire bolt at that barbed thing. Blaze away. At least it's something. Ugh. Got any luck though? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I do. You're Is it seized. worth using on something like that? Uh, it doesn't look very healthy at the moment. Sure. Oh, on the thing. Right. Yeah, on this guy. Yeah. Because his turn's coming up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll use a luck die. Yeah. Boom. How do you want to do it? Oh, it's like a like a quick sniper shot. <laughs> like just finger yeah. gun. <laughs> so, get behind cover. In between Ota and Casimir, this fi this firebolt just smacks this thing in the back of the head and just. Yeah, she doesn't warn thing. anyone. <laughs> this is suddenly fire. You're already squatting down behind the back. I need Casimir to make me a wisdom saving throw. Ooh, uh, I get a vanish from Hero's Feast. 
Yes. Yeah. 19. 19, you're fine. Whew. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Shark's turn. Wrong character sheet, wrong character sheet. Oh, my, wrong character sheet. So. That hero's face saved my ass there, I'm fucking did. sure. <laughs> um, let's see, how far away is she from you guys? She's still a sword space away. A little bit, yeah. yeah still a sword space. And I think Sandstorm's got eight turns left on his box. He, he does. Yeah. <laughs> so, for her turn, she is going to... Uh, let's see. She's going to get some range. And because she has it, she's going to cast a spell. Sure. Yeah, she's going to cast a spell. Mm. And she's going to upcast this. Uh oh. Yeah. Hi. I wish I knew what that meant. That's a high level. Yeah. Oh, as in like raise the level of the spell. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just going to roll a d6. <laughs> oh no. Um, no, she knows who she's going to target. Kazumi. Yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I need yeah, you to make a dexterity saving throw. <sighs> you hear in your mind. Um, the strangest thing uh, you hear in your mind. Oh, your little tricks, wizard. I can see you right through them and you will not get the better of me like that again. So dexterity saving throw. But the strangest thing is the... The disintegrate doesn't come directly from her. She puts her hand out and casts it, but the beam, uh, you see, it comes from up and to the side. This is a spell targeting just me, correct? Yes. I want to use the cube to absorb it. You can absorb it. Which is once a day. I noticed you changed that. I did. Because Which is fine. That's Which point. is totally fair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, she is going to use... And that was what level spell? That was a 7th level spell. Do you gain the spell slot or do you de- gain that spell? No, I gain the. So I gain a number of points equal to the spell slot that are stored in the cube. Right. Okay. Um, they're gone. Amalia. What do you What do you mean by points? Sorry. So it's just like I gain seven points for a seventh level spell. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I, I can get, and I can gain those spell points. I can gain those cool. spell points. So it's sort of like I can use them to sort of recharge my spells. Oh, so instead of having like a X it's not, amount it's of not like, like a you one can't to one use three threes, you got like say twelve points. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha. But uh, above fifth level, you can only use like whatever your class has. Otherwise, it'd be bullshit. So like six, seventh levels, I can only use like one per day, which is what everyone else gets. That's cool. Okay, that's Amalia, cool. Amalia, your turn. Uh, Amalia. With the thing in front of her gone, she's gonna use her her double movement of sixty feet. Mm-hmm. Get there. And for her extra extra action, she'll use the dash. Yeah. So hold on one sec. As you pass through this section here. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as a lightning bolt uh, shoots out from the column in front of you. <coughs> Traps. <coughs> shoots up like that, shooting electricity. So you are going to see succeed, so you're going to take half damage. Why was that an advantage? Because you're haste, is that correct? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, beautiful. So you're going to take half damage to lightning. So you're going to take 10 points lightning damage. Are you resistant to it from the spell? I don't think so. No, I didn't didn't put that in. Cool, good. Uh, so yeah, you take half damage. You take 10 points of lightning damage as you yep. zone on in. As that uh, trap rune 
that glyph dis disappears. You have to make a concentration check now. You do. Yes, uh, which is a con. Yes. Easy. Which is a uh, warcaster, so. Oh, it's on the map. Nice. <laughs> Very oh, nice. Nice. Yes. That would suck to lose that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a it's a high risk. That's why oh, I did okay, I did put so. it on there. So. And since yeah. you get that close as well again, another one goes off. Directly, oh, no. uh, directly from this column here. So I need another deck save. Sorry. Deck save. It's okay. Uh, what for you? What spell are you using that uses concentration? Is lightning haste. Oh, learning haste. Okay. Just like haste, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But a little bit of a spin on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So yep. on a 15, you are going to fail. So you're going to take full damage of 24. Yep. That mm. rune is. Uh, that one. That one. She's going to use absorb elements. Yep. Her reaction Absolute. on that one. Yep. So it's 12. So I need another so constitution like saving throw. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Good, good. Very nice. Um, and yeah, and she was going to use her the extra action from the haste to dash to go another 60 feet and appear right next to Sharax. Okay. So that's the end of your turn? Nope. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. I still get still my has attack the normal action. action. <laughs> yeah, you, you go. go for it. And she's just gonna just lightning all around her. She's just gonna say, "It's a good thing Tiamat is looking down at you, so she can see you fail and die here." She will take her attacks. Go for it. I think a 15 will hit. <laughs> but so, there's a 22. As she holds her hand up, she deflects the 15. As you see, there's not even a spark from her hand. On the 21, there is a spark. She sends off the other. But you do cut down alongside of her arm, cutting her intricate lace sleeve. And you draw a bit of uh, purplish blood from it. So, mm, yeah. The 21 or the 22? On the 22. Okay. okay, so she takes an extra d6 lightning damage and also 14 radiant damage. Yep. 35 all up. Yeah. Unless she's resistant to one of those things. So you see, as you are dealing that damage, there is um, something of significance like to, as the damage is being, deal, being dealt. 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 Uh, so, make an intelligence check. Intelligence. 21. Nice. Fucking god rolling this one. Yeah. <laughs> Carrying the team. <laughs> I am pretty deep though, so I need you guys to hurry up. <laughs> no, no, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah, 21. We're not actually hiding behind the chairs, we're sitting on them just watching. Yeah, we're just spectating, got the popcorn uh, out. <laughs> Since you're so close up and personal with her, you can see that there is something around her chest that's deeply embedded into her skin that's being branded there. You can see that there are also, um, in that same section, seven glowing dots. Each one of them are glowing. Um, and on my turn still, I don't think I've used my bonus action. I'm going to use my second win as well. As she just, after those attacks, she just steps back and just goes, just takes a deep breath. And heals up. Okay. Uh, at the end of your turn, she's going to use a legendary action. Ooh. I need. Let me get some. Hit. 
On a 16, that's going to miss. Got him, oh, these, these fuckers again. <laughs> As coming out of invisibility, a orb of metal bands appears and just flies past you. And, and splaying down onto the ground. Now they would just like do a quick step back. <laughs> uh, Ikra. Um, so these five orb things that are above a head, can we see those from where we are, or is it... You don't see okay. anything above it. They're head. invisible. Okay. But mm. we know... At least one of the effects is one absorbs magic. Yeah. Well, something absorbs magic there. That's rotating around her. Okay. So I'm going to move forward 30 feet. Um, I'm going to... Uh, cut it changes what I was going to do. I'm going to cast a grasping arrow. Uh, sorry, fire a grasping arrow at her. Mm -hmm. Which I believe, yeah, I've already got in there. Which is definitely not going to hit. Not with that attitude. 22 is the hit, like... Ugh. Okay, on a 15, yeah. She, that arrow just bing, bounces off her. Speed is resorted. Um, so none of those effects or anything work, do they? No, unless it hits, it doesn't take any effect. Okay, and... Uh, bonus action, I can't really... Can transform again if you want to. I've got a kind of idea of something I want to do. Okay. So I'm just holding off on it. Okay. Chasm. Um, going to turn into an elk and catapult her through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some magic. Oh. Oh. Ignore that. <laughs> it's not actually that. I was just having a look at it. <laughs> no, I'll ignore it. Keeps rolling 3d20, I'm scared. <laughs> uh, from our fights with dragons before and research, do we know if dragons are resistant to non-magical attacks? You know for a fact that dragons aren't resistant to non-magical attacks. They're just okay. very sturdy. Okay. Very hard to get through their scales. So I'm gonna go up to here. So I know Amalia's triggered all the traps over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, where were you standing before? Yeah. Okay. Do I trigger any traps? No. Okay. Pretty much because you, you followed you followed my exact path. Yeah, exactly. From there. <laughs> Be stupid not to. Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, cool. And you look over at Ikram as you say that. Um, uh, can I fling out a handful of coins and cast animate objects? Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. I too can have things floating above my head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at me! I have ten things floating, <laughs> and now you have ten things floating too. <laughs> Uh, yes, you can. So they will... Because it has 120 foot range. I'll have a bunch of coins. Go and attack her. Attack her, my minions. Okay, they go flying down towards us, swirling above over her head. Okay. Uh, they are tiny, so they get a plus eight. So does a... Hmm, I think four of them will hit. A 22 will hit, yeah? 22 will just pierce okay. through a hand. So four of them will hit. The 14, the 18, the 16, and the 19. Right, throw your damage. So she takes 29 bludgeoning damage. 29 bludgeoning damage. Uh, as you're in close there, Amali, you see that that center room begins to glow. Which does? 
the center rune on her chest. Oh. As uh, these four coins actually do come in, pierce the skin, they kind of deflect off bing, 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 as the gloom as the rune glows. Silver. Do they affect her? Not as not as much as you were hoping for. Okay. The physical damage. Yeah. Okay. So twenty nine half is. 14. 14, thank you. I already did the math, but I closed my phone. <laughs> you played yourself. Nah. Oops, 14. Not 144. 14. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Kazimir, <laughs> at, the end of, at the end of your turn, um, where is the cube right now? In my hand? Uh, you see it open. Ooh. The cube opens. Uh, and the cube itself begins to pull out the uh, what's magic the portable hole hold up cube basically takes off from the side plants on the ground and begins to open what the uh, Otar's turn Otar rushes down and in her haste, she is going to spam uh, some magic missiles. One, two, three, four. At level two. Six. Three. That's the weirdest way it's ever cast magic missile in my life. Mm. I think magic missile is you roll once and it does that damage how many times? Oh yeah, that's right. All right, so I'm just going to times that by four. <coughs> four, and it, the majority of it does get absorbed. Basically, two bolts do get absorbed into the orb. So is that is that orb the orb that you're talking about is around her? Uh, or the some, one that's the one something's that's... around her that's absorbing this shit. Well, since Amalia is there, can she see kind of what's doing it? Make a perception check. Right there. Or Arcana check. Perception's fine. Let's see. That's an invisible object. No, you cannot see it. Okay. But you know for a fact, okay, something's probably invisible that's absorbing the, the energy. At the end of Otar's turn, Casimir, you see the ma the white veil lift up. Uh, yeah. Macath has the white veil. Do I? No, I gave it back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I ah, gave it. Okay. I gave it back. After Sorry, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Fair enough. Sorry, my bad. So and continue, car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. It just lifts. It just lifts up. Fuck. Make an intelligence check if you want. Yes, I do want to make an intelligence check. Why is there? Some of these things messing with my cube. There is something interfering. It is not of your own will. You are not willing this. Uh, it's not me doing it, right? It's just no. something else doing it to the cube. Yes. Mika. Hmm. Uh, oh. From where you are, you can't currently see that the cube is on the ground with the mask just floating just off the ground. Okay, so I can't no, see not, it. Not from this position, unless you uh, gain altitude or walk, go around either way. I mean, she would. Um, Okay, 
So... Oh, no, I didn't mean to move myself. Um... She'll, she'll fly over to basically the center of th the room. Mm -hmm. And when she gets to here, she'd be able to see the... Oh, yeah. Well, seeing that, um, and it's it, it's obvious to the look on Casimir's from the look on Casimir's face that he's definitely not <laughs> doing this. I, I believe so. Casimir's looking in shock at the moment. Is he? So I would. Uh... <laughs> It's not like he's confidently holding the cube and... No, the, the cube's currently on the ground with a yeah. uh, 10 foot wide diameter. Uh, What's happening to your cube? Sorry, man. I know, it's just going a little bit haywire. It's not doing what I'm asking. Does that mean your pennies aren't working either? <laughs> pennies are still No, working. my pennies are. Pennies are still oh, okay. Working. That's a concentration thing. All right. I want to do something, but I don't know if it'll affect anything to do with the cube. Uh, I don't know. You do what you do? I, I, the Catherine seeing that is going to... Um, uh, okay. I'm I'm gonna wall of force a sphere around it Ooh. to trap it, like like um in Steven universes, like Steven's bubbles. Oh, neat. And try and yeah. make a little bubble. Make a nope. bubble around it. It's going nowhere. Yeah, I was gonna originally do like a hemisphere, but I didn't realize that it doesn't need to be touching anything. It can be floating. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, that's true. Mm. Is a cube trying to get to... Um... I have no idea. Oh, okay. Honest, it's just like, fell out of my hand onto the ground and opened up by itself. And then the, the mask just flew out of it. Okay. Like, so, yeah. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> So uh, nothing can physically um, pass through it. It's immune to all damage and can't be dispelled by dispel magic. Yeah, only disintegrate can destroy. Yeah. Disintegrate. Yeah. And Sharks has already cast a ninth level and a seventh level spell today. Mm -hmm. So she still can cast disintegrate, likely. If she has a but sixth and eighth it's... slot left, but on impulse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ooh, I have, hmm, but magic still isn't doing much. Not doing much, it? no. Seems like uh, it's, she's resistant to magic because of the thing that's floating around. Yeah. Well, she's not resistant to it. It's more like it's uh, buffing, uh, taking most of the damage away from it. It's oh, yeah. Into it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, it has like the same effect basically. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. Thing, but... Um. <clears throat> well. Uh... Such an action. Can I? When it says like something is one reaction, I just can't cast it can I? I it has to be a reaction yeah it has to yeah. be a reaction to whatever the uh what's the spell shield uh yeah so incoming then... attack um so like a uh, sword attack or claw yeah sandstorm get out of there go, go back to your box um oh, that's, adorable. Uh, that's all she's gonna do <laughs> okay at that point, Sharax, 
you see she begins to get into the intricacies of casting a spell. Mm-hmm. As she basically reaches a hand out above her and pull and basically brings something in. She pushes out and you see that the that the bubble is then um begun to be drawn forward. She begins to roll and pull the object towards her. Hmm. Um, just hold on one sec. Is it a spell? It or is, is a it... spell. It is a spell. She is uh, casting a <coughs> spell. Um... It is... Moving an object. Not than 60 feet, so I can't counter spell. Ah. That's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. No. No! Damn it, if only she was a big dragon! Basically, yeah. (laughs) Bigger hitbox. You human bitch! Phone, be quiet. Um, where is this? Where did that go? Oh. Huh, that didn't go in there. I should have gone in there. Anyway, uh, she basically casts telekinesis. Okay. She begins to move the object that is the ball closer towards her. Um, that's was one of that's two of the legendary actions oh. that, and that was at the end of your turn so I'm just going to put a bubble on the field how big is it by the way uh it's like it's like a little bigger than the the veil itself so it's probably like a five foot bubble yeah uh, and sh- with telekinesis, she can move it sixty feet towards her. Oh God! <coughs> um, oh no! Uh, nope. I'm sorry. Only thirty feet. <laughs> good. I, I take back the full god. I just do a go. <laughs> just so a go. Just a go. Commands it to come back to her. And upon that, you do, uh, a lot of you then do hear. (laughs) And then there's a massive cry. (laughs) As she then begins to laugh. (laughs) As her eyes then glow green. Now, Ice Claws. Through those before me, in your honor of your queen. A couple of seconds just pass. The eerie silence passes over. There is a shadow that goes over the light that comes in through the stained glass window. Until the roof collapses and torn asunder by the gigantic claws of the Beatrice. Her roar echoes over the whole city-wide battlefield as there is a pause for a moment. Those crystal blue eyes stare down at the party. A tinge of green among their possession of this apex predator. Everyone can make me a perception check. Mm. Uh. Try roll. That's my grandma, isn't it? <laughs> That's your grandma. <laughs> a tinge of green in her eyes, huh? So she's been like mind controlled or something. <laughs> okay, but it is kind of fitting that I rolled higher. So. <laughs> yeah. Is it high enough? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. The only one to see it floating 
just behind her head crest is a crystal sphere. There is a tinge of green energy uh, in it as well as it floats. You can see that there is a magical ley line connection between it and a Wisphere Tis. You can see at that moment as well, Sharax kind of has a, an especial, and I'm going to say also Amalia, you can see that at the very pinpoint of her eyes in the green, there is a blue, very, very slight blue iris, as if Sharax is seen through someone's eyes. As the great... Only, only Amalia sees that? Uh, I'm just going to say you can see that as well, just from okay. where you are. As you look at the horror of what's overtaken uh, your family, to then look at her and hatred and despite as this gigantic dragon has just come through. I need to make a big one to be really honest as well. <laughs> she's about to eat. Oh no, now she's going to eat me. Oh god. Oh Jesus. <laughs> she big. <laughs> How did we fit her under the house? She tunnels. It's a big house. <laughs> <laughs> and she is basically clawed through the roof. Jeez. And she stares down at you all. <sighs> That's where we're going to end our session tonight. No! No! <laughs> no! Help. We're in danger. <laughs> and I'm just going to roll her initiative now so we know. Like one ancient and it's dragon was One ancient dragon is not enough. It's got to add another one. Actually, that is going to be changed to a 19. Wait, what the- Why? As Sharax clicks her fingers. Okay. Wait. Got meta magic. Not actual meta magic, but like- No, no, it's meta. <laughs> <laughs> meta. Oh no, it's not meta, but it is She's a divination wizard. Sounds a lot like divination wizard to me. Sounds a lot like you, maybe, you think? Possible? Very, very much so. I mean, she does see in the future and, like, stuff, so... It's like, what the fuck? All these fucking ancient dragons get magic as well? <laughs> They're not strong enough already? <laughs> yep. Yeah. And with that, we bring tonight's <laughs> session of Dragon's Brew D&D uh, to its closure. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we're in danger. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Shit. Just a little bit. Oof. Just a little bit. But on another note, we'll be back next week with Dragon's Rude D and D. Same time, same place, same uh, fun-filled roles as we bring in a. You know, just a little something that was, you know, good fun, good fun. But you have done some damage to Sharax, and her the, only, the question have I have, some. <laughs> the the only question I have is, did it look like the physical slashing damage that Amalia did was like deflected as well? Yeah, it was being deflected to lessen the blow, basically. <laughs> Okay, but it was so it, it still even, did a, it still did like some damage. But, but I mean, even the even the physical damage was absorbed in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so she's that... immune. She's pretty much what is it resistant to every type of damage at this point. That yeah, we can that we can presume. You can cool. you can assume that uh, after your encounter in the cavern, she's taken a lot of precautions. How far away do we see these invisible things absorb elements and stuff around her? Like right beside her head, like right here. Cool. Mm. That's all I need to know. And yeah, and Brad can't see them. They're, they're invisible, places. but I know they're there. Okay. I've seen them absorb yeah. stuff around. You her. know, there's something there for certain. It's just 
Just he, or him, or all? No, you all, all yeah, yeah, cool. something. Like, yeah. like you all know something's up. You just can't see it. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. But like, you've seen a point around her absorb like fire and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. And that will be next time on Dragons Brew D and D. We will catch you next time, folks. You can see me on Tall Scores channel. And remember to set you to uh, set your clocks back that don't automatically set back as daylight savings ends this Sunday at 3 a.m. So yeah. yay! I lose <laughs> an hour of sleep to wake up for the vice, which you can catch on Sunday morning at. 5 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time or 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over in the States, which I am looking forward to. Fantastic. Hallelujah. Good stuff. I don't know how you function that early. Look to be to play. He doesn't. I don't know. It's, it's that makes more sense. It's hilarious because I fumble and bumble my way through everything. I don't serious. Um, skill challenge encounter and I just wasn't thinking overshot the end goal by a fucking mile and <laughs> just KO'd myself off a cliff <laughs> <laughs> nice what kind of character are you playing? I am playing a hexblade warlock called Badar Lycran who's been through four physical changes throughout the entire series and now has two sentient god weapons one of which hates him and wants to kill him fun yeah. That's kind of cool. Good but fun. does the other one want to save him? So it's like the oh, devil and the angel? Like the other one that he's soul bound to. Yeah, the other one we're bound, uh, our souls are bi- bound together. It was actually Vidar that you, that the party fought the Never, yeah. the Neverwing with yeah. back in um, so. the Dragon's Vice campaign, courtesy of Viridian Knight. Because I had money. Now I don't, because the Australian dollar is shit. The Australian dollar is really shit. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, be safe and be careful out there, uh, friends, foes, and families, because COVID-19 is a fucking bitch. Hopefully, yep. after it's all done and dusted, we will be all fine. But until then, friends, keep rolling 20s, stay safe, we're out. Bye-bye. Toodaloo. <laughs>